Good evening there, everybody. Uh, what is happening? Hopefully you're having a wonderful day today. So I thought that I would review this little video. So this is the first time that I'm hearing about this channel. Uh, I've never seen this channel before, but I did a subject that was similar to this today. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to release this video today, but I thought why not do a video on this because some people are starting to finally... <laughs> <laughs> fight back a little bit against the LDBC and new media. And I've told people this, all new media in LDBC means is pro-black boxing. And a certain amount of people told me, well, I don't necessarily agree with you that they're pro-black boxing. I just believe that they support the PBC. Well, here's the thing that I'm saying. <sighs> do I believe that they are pro-black boxing channels? Yes, I do. Now, I had a couple of people uh, bring up the point that they also have hated on a couple of black fighters. For example, Anthony Joshua and Terrence Crawford, what some people brought to my attention. Well, here's the thing when it comes down to it. A certain amount of the LDBC channels most likely have criticized Terrence Crawford because they realize the same thing that I realize and a certain amount of these other channels realize, which is that Terrence Crawford does not necessarily have an A-class resume. And I don't care <laughs> who wants to argue that. But when it came to other fighters potentially threatening the number one pound for pound spot, like a Vasily Lomachenko or a Canelo Alvarez, all of a sudden, those same LDBC channels that criticized Terrence Crawford, <laughs> all of a sudden, they started claiming that he was the number one pound for pound fighter. Now, why is that? Because even a fighter that overall they criticized and they truly believe does not even have an A-class resume... They would rather have a black fighter as the number one pound for pound fighter than a Vasily Lomachenko or a Canelo Alvarez. All right. Now, the title of this video is Tiafimo and Canelo hated by pro black channels because they Latinos <laughs> or because they are Latinos. Tiafimo Lopez and Canelo Alvarez are not hated by these quote unquote pro black channels or these LDBC and new media channels. Because they're Latinos, they don't like them because they're not black fighters, because they're not American black fighters. And I've already told people this, the LDBC and new media does not care about the European black fighters. They care about the American and the Caribbean black fighters. So it is what it is. And you're going to see a certain amount of these people support them. And a certain amount of people will ask, well, you know, why would they criticize Terrence Crawford, all that sort of stuff? And I've already told people this before. They will criticize a black fighter, an American black fighter, or a black fighter in general, if they feel that that black fighter is avoiding another black fighter. But if they believe that he is possibly avoiding a Caucasian fighter or a Latino fighter, they are not going to mention it. <laughs> when it comes down to the overall, they're not going to mention Jamal Trello allegedly turning down a contract against the Canelo Alvarez. They were not going to mention Regis Progre backing out of the tournament, even though they had no problem mentioning that Jose Ramirez backed out of the tournament. You know, they are not, <laughs> they are not going to bring up that Javante Tang Davis avoided a Vasily Lomachenko. They're not going to bring that up, but they have no problem bringing up that a Terrence Crawford maybe does not want to fight a Sean Porter, or maybe does not want to fight an Earl Spence Jr., because as long as a black fighter is the number one pound for pound, that's the ideal situation in their minds. And listen, this is not me saying that there are not dominant black fighters out there. That's not what I'm saying at all. But as of right now, in my opinion, the number one pound for pound fighter would be Canelo Alvarez. And Tifima Lopez, <laughs> many of those pro-black channels and the LDBC and new media channels, uh, they liked him at first because they he got out of the way a big <laughs> blockade overall, uh, at least to them, in Vasily Lomachenko. But the reason overall why they immediately started not liking him was because he waged a war with Deontay Wilder, or not necessarily waged a war, but told the truth about Deontay Wilder. Was that Deontay Wilder was acting, <laughs> to put it bluntly, like a Class A biatch. <laughs> so it is what it is. We're going to see what this dude says. It should be very interesting. Let's get into it. Already know this is Paul Drunk Boxing, aka Mr. Moose Shine himself. <laughs> Let's cut to the chase here, y'all. Let's cut to the chase here. 
In my channel, I pride myself in saying that we're one race, brothers and sisters of the most high. But I understand the YTBC and the YouTube boxing community in this, in this cesspool. I've already told people this. When it comes to boxing especially and fighting, always expect people to stick with their own. In general, you expect people to stick with their own. And once again, I have no problem with people sticking up for their demographics. But when it comes down to the overall or supporting their own, the problem comes in is when you are very clearly biased and very clearly illogical and you'll criticize one demographic for something and you won't criticize another demographic for something. That's a problem. And that's what the LDBC and new media does. But it is what it is. Anyway. In this toxic community? <laughs> nah, y'all don't want unity. Y'all want division. Now, recently I've been hearing Canelo Alvarez is ducking. Canelo, Canelo Alvarez is not that good and not that nice. And his defense is not that good. Teofimo Lopez, fight of the year. No, 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 no. He ducking. No, no, no. He beat a guy with Solo Machinko that was put in a pedestal and he really didn't earn it. Tyson Fury, he's a cheater. And once again, you have these guys alleging that Vasily Lomachenko was this overrated hype job. You have these guys that are alleging that Gennady Golovkin was this overrated hype job. And I'm sure if Canelo Alvarez were to lose <laughs> sooner uh, than later, then, or you know, that is if he does get defeated even again in his career because Canelo was, <laughs> Canelo was on the max level right now. But when it comes down to the overall bottom line is this, uh, you know, I'm sure that they would be willing to call him a hype job as well. But Deontay Wilder gets his ass whooped <laughs> against Tyson Fury, and yet he's not a hype job, you know. Uh, I'm trying to think, you know, Terrence Crawford, who does not have an A-class resume, uh, you know, somehow has a better resume than a Vasily Lomachenko, you know, or is somehow not a hype job, you know. You never hear them, you know, heard them say that Adrian Broner was a hype job. And out of all the fighters that I just mentioned, that is the only fighter <laughs> that I truly believe out of all those names I just listed was an actual hype job. But it is what it is. Anyway. Once again, a certain amount of these people overall are going to say, well, these channels are not pro-black. They just support, you know, the PBC. No, that's not true. Because as soon <laughs> as Vasily Lomachenko, who was a Caucasian fighter, and as soon as Canelo Alvarez, who you could, you know, uh, identify in a couple of different ways. You could identify him as a Latino fighter. You also could identify him as a Caucasian Hispanic. But it is what it is. He can identify with both groups. And the LDBC and New Media, they've been alleging that Terrence Crawford is above Canelo Alvarez. Now, why is that? You know, because once again, they, in their minds, have to have a black fighter as the number one pound for pound. There's a reason why they've been tearing down Canelo Alvarez's whole career. <laughs> they've been trying to tear down this man's career, at least when it was right now. You know, they were uplifting Canelo Alvarez when it came to fighting Gennady Golovkin because they needed a Caucasian fighter to get torn down first. But it is what it is. They will tear down the most prominent fighters. That's what they do. You know, it is what it is. But anyway. He and be Deontay Wilder. So Canelo Alvarez, the most accomplished one of them all. Aside from Manny Pacquiao, y'all already know Manny Pacquiao, a cemented legacy. And the YTBC. Seems like people hate... You know, I remember a key TV, and if there's, you know, if I can find the video, I'll review it again. But a key TV at one time was bitching and was trying to get the Manny Pacquiao fan base against Canelo Alvarez and uh, Vasily Lomachenko. And what he was trying to do, because what happened was, is that when it came to fighters of the decade, both Canelo Alvarez and Vasily Lomachenko were above Manny Pacquiao. And, <laughs> of course, a certain amount of people had a problem with that. And a key TV saw his opportunity to strike <laughs> when it came down to the overall. And he said, well, how, you know, with how a key TV sounds, well, how are you going to put Vasily Lomachenko and Canelo Alvarez over Manny Pacquiao? Tell me, you know, his wins that he has that's as good as a Marco Antonio Barrera and all that stuff. And here's the thing. Vasily Lomachenko is debatably above Manny Pacquiao for the 2010s. Because Vasily Lomachenko, at one point in time, was the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter on a couple of lists for, you know, the 2010s. 
Manny Pacquiao was never the number one pound for pound fighter from what I remember in the 2010s, and there's a reason for that, because Manny Pacquiao, you could debate, only had a couple of A-class wins in the 2010s. You know, all of Manny Pacquiao's very elite wins, like Miguel Cotto, Marco Antonio Barrera, Eric Morales, Ricky Hatton, most of those came in the 2000s. Now, there was still very good wins that he had uh, in the 2010s. There was also some losses. He also had a very competitive fight against Jeff Horn. He also got knocked out by Juan Manuel Marquez and lost to Floyd Mayweather quite dominantly. So it is what it is. Um, but <laughs> these guys only brought up Canelo Alvarez's name and Vasily Lomachenko's name. You know, well, why are they above Manny Pacquiao? You know, Manny Pacquiao fans, join our side because you should fight. You should fight in this. They're just trying to put Caucasian fighters ahead of all these great fighters. They're trying to turn the fan bases against each other. Or trying to make them join their cause is what they were trying to do. But when it comes down to it, there was no mention of Terrence Crawford being above Manny Pacquiao on the pound for pound list. Can you or you you know on the fighters of the decade list? Because if we really want to bring it up, what win does Terrence Crawford have in his career that's as good as a Marco Antonio Barrera? <laughs> what win in his career does he have that's as good as a Eric Morales win that Manny Pacquiao has in his career? But I'm sure if someone brought that up about Terrence Crawford, what they would say is that, well, Manny Pacquiao beat those guys in the 2000s. Because that's what happened. But it is what it is. Anyway. Greatness. People hate the fighters that's actually putting in that work. And on YTBC, there's a lot of racist channels. Not only are they just... In boxing, there's a lot of racist and there's a lot of racist channels in general. And a certain amount of people might ask me, well... There's a lot of racists in general, you're correct, so why are you not addressing a certain amount of these other racist fans? It seems like you're just picking on the black fighters or the black fan bases. That's not what I'm trying to do. But the problem here is, <laughs> is that I don't see a lot of other mainstream channels uh, that are pro-Latino or pro-Caucasian. The mainstream channels that I see when it comes to the boxing community are pro-black. So it is what it is. It's racist. They're proud to be racist. Proud to be racist. This is what I call this a cesspool. And you know, boxing <laughs> is these, it's this type of sport that is no holds bar. You know, you can say whatever you want to say. Even the athletes can say whatever you want to say. It's not like the NBA, they got to be on their PR shit. You can say whatever you want to say. And I understand that there's a, a lot of channels out there that they're not in it for boxing. They're not in it to the uplift fighters or uplift the sport of boxing. It's all about feeding the beast. It's all about giving their subscribers what they want to hear. I understand. Get Which is what a lot of these pro-black channels love to do. <laughs> I've already told people this. A lot of these pro-black channels do not even truly believe what they say. Don't let them fool you. They're just trying to fool you. And unfortunately, like I said, a lot of these simpletons and these morons are falling for this shit. <laughs> but it is what it is. The money. Get your super chat. I understand. But it's still you're proud to be racist. You're proud to not like Canelo Alvarez because he's not black. And that's the best way to put it. They don't necessarily don't like Canelo because he's a Latino fighter. It's just that he's not the right pigmentation. <laughs> he's not the right color. That's the bottom line. You know, a lot of people think that they may just be against Latino fighters or they may just be against Caucasian fighters. No, they're not, <laughs> they're against anyone who's not an American black fighter. Now, they will try to support here and there in order to get, because they try to attract all demographics. So they'll say positive things about a David Benavides or a Manny Pacquiao or Sir Man, these other fighters of different demographics, if it somehow supports their pro-black agenda. But when it comes down to, now, once again, you know, you're going to have a certain amount of people say, well, why, why would they say if they're so pro-black, you know, why overall would they say that Anthony Joshua was avoiding Deontay Wilder? Well, that, the answer to that is very simple. Because Anthony Joshua, <laughs> overall, they thought, uh, you know, allegedly, that Anthony Joshua was avoiding an American black fighter by the name of Deontay Wilder. Now, had that been <laughs> Tyson Fury at the time, I highly doubt it would have been the same thing. But it is what it is. Anyway. Yep. And there's other <laughs> examples of this when it comes down to it overall. Like when you take a look at Javante Tank Davis and Vasily Lomachenko, none of these LGBC or these pro-black channels said anything about Javante Tank Davis refusing <laughs> the Lomachenko fight 
Not just once, but a couple of times. So anyway, but they have no problem apparently alleging that Lomachenko, you know, got the WBC franchise belt. They have no problem saying that Canelo Alvarez is avoiding all these fighters. But when Terrence Crawford says he doesn't want a Sean Porter, all of a sudden they're a little bit slow to report it and they make up all these excuses. All of a sudden when Javante Tank Davis <laughs> says he doesn't want a Vasily Lomachenko, all of a sudden they don't want to report it <laughs> when it comes down to the overall. So it is what it is. All their agenda is at the end of the day is to make the American black fighters look the best that they can. And that makes them pro-black. Listen, once again, there is no problem with supporting your own demographic. That is not what I'm saying. But when your complete agenda <laughs> is to basically report certain things on other demographics, but you don't report certain things on your own demographic in order to make your own demographic look better and the other ones look worse, that's being pro-whatever you are. So it is what it is. And that basically ruins you as an objective and logical commentator. Because that means you're not logical and objective. But it is what it is. Proud to not support Canelo Alvarez because he's not black. So you throw in and shame him with a, he's stuck in Charlo. He's stuck in he's... And Charlo is not serious about taking those big fights, man. <laughs> I don't give a shit what anybody says. I believe he did turn down a Canelo Alvarez contract. The man, you, you expect me to believe that Charlo apparently is serious about fighting Canelo Alvarez in Mexico City, but he's not even willing to fight Demetrius Andre on the zone? <laughs> like, you expect me to believe that? Okay. He, he's, he's, he's ducking Charlo. Out of all the things that he's done, he's ducking Charlo. Out of all the things that Teofimo Lopez has done in the last two fights and accomplished what he's accomplished, oh, no, he needs to fight Devin Haney. He's, he's ducking Devin Haney. Oh, no, Tyson Fury. No, what about Deontay Wilder? He's even Deontay Wilder. These respective channels. And once again, a certain amount of people overall say, well, you know, how can you call them pro-black? Well, just answer me this question. When it comes to, when push comes to shove, <laughs> when it comes to the pound for pound rankings, and when it comes to the who's ducking who, what do they talk about more? Do they talk about Terrence Crawford avoiding a Sean Porter or avoiding a Earl Spence fight more? Or do they talk in a, you know, do they talk about T. Fima Lopez avoiding a Devin Haney more? Or do they talk about Vasily Lomachenko avoiding a Devin Haney more? Or a Canelo avoiding a Jamal Charlo more? What do they talk about more? <laughs> and when it comes to the pound for pound rankings, who are they mainly trying to push as a number one pound for pound fighter? Even though Terrence Crawford does not have that great of a resume when it comes down to the overall, who are they always trying to push over the other fighters? You know, it is what it is. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say from the beginning that are predominantly African-Americans, those channels that you know who they are, yeah, they're racist. They don't like... I agree. Teofimo Lopez because they wish that Tag Davis or Devin Haney did what Teofimo Lopez done. Now, I'm... A and Tank Davis didn't do what Teofimo did because he was scared shitless of Vasily Lomachenko. And so was Mikey Garcia. You know, uh, you know, Mikey Garcia gets off the hook a lot. Mikey Garcia was scared shitless of Vasily Lomachenko. You know, <laughs> he did the same thing that Kelbrook did when Kelbrook moved up to 160. That's the only reason why he moved up to 147, because he did not want a possible ass whooping against Vasily Lomachenko. And that's another story that the LDBC does not bring up. They have no problem mentioning that Vasily Lomachenko gave up the WBC strap. And hey, listen, I have no problem with that. If you want to mention that, that's cool. <laughs> you can make a debate that Vasily Lomachenko maybe did not want to face Devin Haney. That's 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 fine. But then <laughs> when Mikey Garcia, now he's a Latino fighter, but one has to ask themselves, why overall did they not mention it when Mikey Garcia gave up his WBC strap? Because the enemy of my enemy is my friend. That's the bottom line. They don't look at Mikey Garcia as a fighter that they like, <laughs> but they had to tear down Vasily Lomachenko very quickly. Because Vasily Lomachenko was gaining, gaining a lot of power in the pound-for-pound pound rankings. Alright? When you have a fighter in the pound-for-pound pound rankings, like a Vasily Lomachenko or a Canelo Alvarez, they're going to use anyone, <laughs> any demographic they can, to tear that fighter down. But their agenda is always the same. The pro-black angle. Although you may not see it. But it is what it is. Say this. Because even Teofim Lopez, in that fight... Uh, he went to the Canelo Alvarez event, and he said, you know what? Because once again, if they get Canelo Alvarez and Vasily Lomachenko out of the way, who are they pushing to be the number one pound-for-pound pound fighter? Now, if you believe 
that Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence, if one of those two deserved to be the pound for pound, no problem. <laughs> but also take a look at the other fighters they have on their list. Jamal Charlo, Jamel Charlo, Demetrius Andre, Javante Tang Davis, certain fighters that don't even deserve to be on the top 10 pound for pound list. <laughs> it is what it is. We do, I'm doing, we got to do this for a Latino, right? Now I'm going to say it like this. Anybody could be pro Latino, pro black, pro Asian, pro, pro whatever. All good. All good. Be proud, even though that I wish it was one race. But Actually, no, that's a problem. Uh, you should not be pro-black, pro-Caucasian, pro-Latino, because that <laughs> those people are overtly biased and illogical. It's not a problem to support your own. But when it comes down to being so overly biased and illogical, then that's when you become pro-black and you become pro-Latino, pro-Caucasian, pro-Asian, pro-Arab. You can't have that if you're trying to be an objective and logical commentator. I understand that this is just a a culture in the sport in the YTBC that everybody want to be divided, right? It's beautiful to be pro and to and to acknowledge and to <coughs> love and to support and praise your culture and race. Cool. But to shame for me to love my culture is a whole different thing. For you to shame a Latino fighter to love and being pro-black, that's not being pro-black. And that, you know, I do agree overall what uh, what he says there. Because what Dante's vaccination <laughs> and a certain amount of these other demographics, what they allege is that, oh, you know, especially with the Caucasians, uh, they say, oh, well, you know, I cheer for my country. You know, when it comes down, you should cheer for your country. Man, the Caucasians are going to cheer for their Caucasian fighters. And especially since the Caucasians do not have a great amount of dominant American fighters that they can relate to with their demographic, they're going to cheer for the Tyson Furies. <laughs> they're going to cheer for the Josh Taylors, the Gennady Golovkins, the Vasily Lomachenkos. And there's no problem with that. <laughs> you know, just like there's no problem if you're a black American and if you want to cheer for a Gilmore Rigandau or an Arasani Lara or an Anthony Joshua, there's no issue with that. The problem comes in <laughs> is if you're trying to be an objective or logical, you know, commentator, or you get to the point overall to where you're a major fanboy and you're very clearly biased and illogical in your judgments. That's where the problem comes in. There's no problem with supporting your own. You know, everyone is going to do that most likely at the end of the day. But it is what it is. For you to shame a black fighter to be a pro Latino, that's not being pro Latino. I mean, that's like <laughs> that's like me saying overall. Uh, that like, well, you know, uh, you guys should be uh, cheering for, you know, all these Mexican-Americans. They should be ashamed of themselves. You know, if Canelo Alvarez fights Caleb Plant and Caleb Plant overall, uh, you know, is going to fight Canelo Alvarez. How dare you guys cheer for Canelo Alvarez? You know, Caleb Plant is American, you bunch of racists. Like, who cares? <laughs> they're they're going to cheer for their own at the end of the day. And I expect that. It is what it is. The problem comes in is when you try to tear down a Caleb Plant career if he does something, and then if Canelo Alvarez does something similar, and just because he's your demographic, you're not going to report it. Or overall, you're going to treat it differently because he's your own demographic. And that's exactly what the LDBC and what new media does. So it is what it is. Do you know that's being insecurity? You don't love yourself. You don't really <laughs> love your culture. you insecure about another culture. That's not being pro Latino, pro white. If you have a problem with a black, with the with the with the with the, with the African Americans or the blacks, no, no, no. It's a different culture, and we also got to emphasize culture because in the UK is way different from America. In the UK, you never hear Anthony Joshua, the black Brit, Lennox Lewis, the black Brit. You know why you don't hear that in British? Because every race in Britain, when it comes down to the overall, even Arabs, they usually have their own fighter to relate to. Whether it be Prince Nassim Hamed, Amir Khan, Josh Taylor, Callum Smith, Lennox Lewis, Anthony Joshua, Dillian White. There's a lot more Caucasian fighters that come out of Britain that are dominant <laughs> than there is in America. So it is what it is. Bruno, the so that's why when a certain amount of people overall say, well, the British people, no matter overall, you know, who uh, fights an American, they always cheer for the British. Well, of course. The Caucasians over in America, really, they feel they don't have a choice but to cheer for Tyson Fury or a Gennady Golovkin or a Vasily Lomachenko. 
because I don't really have <laughs> any certain fighters besides maybe a Caleb Plant to relate to in the Americas. So it is what it is. I mean, maybe Canelo Alvarez, but, you know, the Caucasian families cannot completely relate to him either because most count him as Mexican. You know, even though you could consider him as a Caucasian Hispanic. That grit. You don't hear that. Only in America. You don't hear the American fighter. You hear the black fighter. See, in this America, it's all about race. But the thing is, people are proud to be racist. It's about race everywhere. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> but when it comes down to it overall, in America especially, since usually the Americas only have, I mean, you know, there has been a lot of dominant Mexican-American fighters, but usually the most dominant American fighters are American black fighters, and there's no problem with that. But overall, that means that <laughs> the other races are going to have to find other demographics elsewhere, or they're going to have to relate to uh, it in other places, other countries. So Vasily Lomachenko, who's not an American, the Caucasians are going to relate to him because he's of their same race or same demographic. You know, Canelo Alvarez, the Mexican-Americans, or a lot of the Hispanics or Latinos in America, they're going to cheer for him. Because even though there is a certain amount of, you know, dominant, you know, Mexican-American or Latino-American fighters, you could argue that there's more dominant Hispanic and Latino fighters outside of America. You can make the argument. But anyway. This is awesome. They have the green light. They wit they 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 emphasize their green light to be racist. Because of history. Because of history. Now I'm gonna tell you like this, your boy Punch Young, I come from New York City. And if you're from New York City, you 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 know that you are raised and you experience every culture. I'm raised with every culture. Every culture. Latino, black, Asian, Korean, uh, Chinese, Japanese, Turkish, Moroccan, <laughs> every religion. I live in the hood. I live. I, I, I live in the hood where across the street is a Catholic. Right across the right, directly across the street is a Muslim mosque. In the in, in the other corner, in the uh, up the block, is, is is a Jewish temple. And then you got a Baptist right across the street, United Palace. If you already know from New York City, you already know where I'm from by just saying United Palace. So if you know that area, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So. Don't come with me with this little bullshit about if you're trying to trying to step up to me and be like, oh, punch, you, you, you can't speak for this culture. You can't speak for this race, man. I'm born and raised with every damn culture. New York City is the melting pot of America. Big well, this is the thing, because a certain amount of people overall, <laughs> they might think that I'm trying to speak for uh, the black fans. I'm not trying to speak for them. I'm trying to overall show you a certain amount of the LDBC and new media motivations. People might think that they're not pro-black at the end of the day. I promise you, they're pro-black. <laughs> Those are the people, when push comes to shove, they're going to put their fighters above the other ones, even if they truly don't think they belong there. Just because they're black fighters. And that is illogical, and that is not objective. And that's a problem. When you think, overall, truly, that Vasily Lomachenko does not have a good resume, but then somehow you're going to try and argue <laughs> that Terence Crawford has a better resume than Vasily Lomachenko. Or if you also believe truly deep down that Terence Crawford does not have the resume that, you know, would really could, you know, compare to some others. But you're going to put Terence Crawford above a Vasily Lomachenko anyway. Overall, <laughs> that is racial bias. And that's what a lot of these channels do. Basically. So I know what a culture or a race may feel about another culture. Because once again... A certain amount of these people are going to say, well, a lot of these LDBC channels, they were on Terrence Crawford's ass, yes. And then once Vasily Lomachenko and once Canelo Alvarez came into the picture, all of a sudden they weren't on Terrence Crawford's ass. <laughs> They're only on an American black fighter's ass if it's coming against another American black fighter or a Caribbean black fighter or possibly even another black fighter. All right. Although they don't care as much about the European black fighters. But as soon as it comes against <laughs> another demographic... A Caucasian fighter or a Latino fighter, all of a sudden they put Terrence Crawford at the number one pound for pound spot. So they showed you what their main motivations are. But it is what it is. Once again, there's no problem supporting your demographic. <laughs> but all of a sudden, certain reports uh, overall were not coming out because they felt a Caucasian fighter 
and a Caucasian Hispanic or a Latino fighter by the name of Canelo Alvarez, and also a Caucasian fighter before he lost to Tifuma Lopez by the name of Vasily Lomachenko, were a threat to the number one pound-for-pound pound spot, and they did not want that. So it is what it is. So I'm privy to everything, because if you look at my skin complexion, you don't even know what I am until I tell you. And a lot of races run through this um, vein, my brothers and sister. They throw your thing on. <laughs> you know, if I had to guess, I would say Puerto Rican. But I'm not sure. I got some Puerto Rican friends up there in New York. I, <laughs> just some ones that I met online. But, you know, New York, New York has a lot of communities out there, though. So it is what it is. De todo, mi hermano y mi hermana, yo tengo de todo. So nobody can tell me shit. <laughs> it's a bad as being a mixed, uh, a mixed breed. Yeah. Now, I understand there's some race issues in the sport of boxing. The reason they don't hate, they hate Tiafim Lopez, everybody. Those channels, the respective channels. And I don't believe they believe what they believe because most of these guys... I agree with that. Some of these guys do not believe the bullshit that they've been spouting out of their mouths. I agree with that completely. Anyway. You know who they are. They're significant others, not even. You know when they really started to hate Tiafima Lopez? When he spouted off that shit about Deontay Wilder. <laughs> had, had he said that Tyson Fury was a cheater or all sort of stuff, you think they would have been against him? You think overall if he would have came out and said Josh Taylor's a bitch, you think overall that they would have been against him? Or that Canelo Alvarez is a bitch? You think they would have called him a traitor? Or someone overall that is disloyal? They don't care <laughs> if it's not an American black fighter. But it is what it is. African Americans, those African Americans channels that hate on Latinos. Oh, they don't just hate on Latinos. <laughs> they, they hate on any demographic overall that threatens the number one pound for pound spot. So, it is what it is. Those Latinos <laughs> that may be hating on the African American because they feel like they hate each. It's a silent hate. We're from the hood. The hood is Latino and black. There's some silent racism. We love each other, but también there's a, a a silent hate. Black. I've been I've been I've been in a cab with a Latino telling me that he ain't gonna stop for me because he thought I was black. A Latino said that to me. The same way. The same way. They be like, yo, my man, you a, you you you're fucking Spanish and you and you get a banana bowl and get the hell out of here and stuff like that. You fucking hick. I got in that too. I got to the point where people don't know I got Asian. Tengo Chino. And Parilo Chino. The most bully race in New York. The most bully, but the one that stay quiet on they don't say shit. I don't give a fuck about y'all could do your little racist stuff. We do what we do all day. That's that's the Chinese culture. Now I'm going a little deep, right? Cause y'all don't know it. But anyway, let me get into boxing. Let's keep it real, let's keep it honest. These channels are racist. You hate that. Like, I agree. Latinos and and others that it it's not necessarily that they hate Latinos or even <laughs> that they really have more of a gripe with the Caucasians, even though overall uh, they don't necessarily like the Latinos. But it is what it is when it comes down to the overall. I remember 78 Sports TV. Uh, one thing that he said not too long ago, he said, I'm not going to give their fighters credit. And he was talking about the Caucasians. He said, until they give our fighters credit. Now, what you're supposed to do if you're a logical commentator is that you're not supposed to <laughs> have a, and I don't mean any racial intentions when I say this, because I know some people are going to turn around. But the old saying, you're not supposed to have a monkey see monkey do mentality. You're not supposed to overall have that type of mentality. What you're supposed to do is saying, okay, well, if these channels are not being logical and objective, I'm going to try to be logical and objective on my channel. But that's not what these channels do. <laughs> so it is what it is. It's not predominantly black is succeeding and being the cash cow of the sport of boxing. I hope they will show love more to Anthony Joshua, which is a cash cow of boxing, but they don't show love because remember now it's cold. Anthony Joshua might be the number one cash cow of boxing. But what do these guys allege? Oh, no, it's Deontay Wilder. Oh, no, it's Errol Spence. Now, Errol Spence is getting up there. Errol Spence deserves a lot of credit for his career. But Deontay Wilder, <laughs> he really did not become one of the major cash cows of boxing until he had those two fights with Tyson Fury. 
And these are the same guys that try to allege that Tyson Fury can't sell out a stadium. But yet Tyson Fury overall is, <laughs> you know, Deontay Wilder's biggest draws were when he fought against Tyson Fury. Anyway. They can't like Anthony Joshua more than Deontay Wilder. Right? Of course not, because Anthony Joshua is a black European fighter. Once again, <laughs> when it comes down to the overall, a certain amount of these people are saying they're not pro-black because of Terrence Crawford. They don't care to criticize a black fighter if he's avoiding another black fighter or as long as another black fighter is on the number one pound for pound spot. But as soon <laughs> as it's a Caucasian fighter or a Latino fighter, if they're alleging overall that a black fighter, especially an American black fighter, is avoiding a Caucasian fighter or a Latino fighter, then all of a sudden they're not going to have the same energy anymore. So it is what it is. You see in the thumbnail, I put Keith on Tom Thurman. Keith on Tom Thurman. Yeah, I hate Keith on Tom Thurman with the Earl Spence because Keith on Tom And that's another fighter overall that they turned their back on was Keith Thurman. You know. Now, when Keith Thurman was apparently, allegedly, being avoided by Danny Garcia, they were all on Keith Thurman's balls. <laughs> but then, you know, they turned their back on Keith Thurman. Why is that? Because a certain amount of people might bring this up. Why is that? Because Keith Thurman was allegedly avoiding Earl Spence Jr., who is an American black fighter. They have no problem criticizing their own as long as there's another one of their own on top but if it comes to a Vasily Lomachenko who's a Caucasian fighter and might possibly take the number one pound for pound spot they can't have that if it's a Caucasian Hispanic or a Latino fighter whatever you count Canelo Alvarez to be that possibly could take over the number one pound for pound spot they can't have that so it is what it is Tom Thurman is a mixed breed he is not all black right he's not Yo, Punch, why are you talking like that? I don't give a fuck. Just like you don't give a fuck about how you talk in your channel, this is my channel. You don't like it, unsubscribe. You don't like it, stop viewing, beta males. I'm going to keep it real and I'm going to keep it honest. I'm going to keep it real and I'm going to keep it honest. And there's going to be people out there that, who are you talking about? Because, of course, in the YTBC, they'll be like, yo. Well, for the certain amount of people over that don't know who I'm talking about, let me tell you who I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about Dante's Boxing Nation. I'm talking about Boxing Ego. I'm talking about Blue Blood Sports TV, Aki TV, Champ Side. I'm talking about, uh, I'm trying to think who else is out there, 78 Sports TV. <laughs> I'm thinking about Fan and International Boxing Channel. Those are the channels that I'm thinking about because those are the channels that are pro-black and, the, you know, a part of the LDBC. And I'm sure there's some other, you know, bullshit channels that I'm not thinking of because... I have these certain dudes that go on my channel and say, oh, you're insulting us African-Americans just because a person of color overall, you know, has a channel doesn't mean that they're a part of the LDBC. I'm not saying overall that every, you know, person of color or every black commentator is a part of the LDBC. You have some very good channels out there that are not a part of the LDBC overall and that are not a part of new media that, you know, are colored commentators like Hat Man Strikes Back and Boxing Wave and Counterpunch Boxing. Those are three especially that I watch. But <laughs> all these other channels that I named, yes, they're pro-black. It is what it is. You talking about the LDBC? No, because I don't even know who's the LDBC. I don't know everybody. And I'm not going to put on anybody on no type of group. Or there's other groups that I might not even know the name. Sometimes I thought that the new media is, some people in new media is LDBC. Nah. I respect a lot of channels out there. I respect new media and the LDBC are pretty much... <laughs> <laughs> they're they're really not that different. They have the same ideologies. If they are different, they're different horns on the same head of the devil. That's <laughs> that's all they are. They're a lot like politics. Many people think that the liberals and the conservatives are so much different. All they are is really uh, the same. <laughs> the, the you know two different horns on the same head. All right, it is what it is. Anyway. Of the ring IQs of the world, I respect the unravel boxing of the world, I respect the speaking mind sports of the world, I respect blue, blue, blood, blue blood, blue blood boxing of the world, I respect a lot of channels. But I also see a lot of channels. The channels that I respect are the logical and objective ones. You know, there's this video, not video, excuse me, there's this one channel that I used to watch, and I don't agree with everything that he says, but this one channel named Chronicles of Judah 144 that I used to watch here and there. Now, there was a black commentator, and even though I think he can get <laughs> a little bit too far-fetched sometimes, and he does have his black superiority moments, but when it comes down to the overall, 
Most of the time, you can tell he tries to be an objective and logical commentator. Those are the type of channels that I like. So channels like that, channels like uh, Boxing Wave, uh, Counterpunch Boxing, Hatman Strikes Back, those are the channels that I suggest that you guys listen to. That be on some dumb shit, on some racist, racist shit. And they love to be racist. And you know who you are. It's toxic in this community. If y'all don't want to be, it's not about unity, then fuck it. I'm going to speak on it. I'm going to speak on it. You don't Boxing is never going to have unity. <laughs> that is never going to happen. You know, once again, the demographics and the races, they're all going to stick with their own at the end of the day. And that's not a problem. What the problem is, is that <laughs> when you're a commentator and overall, you know, as a boxing commentator, your objective is to be logical and objective. If there's a boxing commentator like a Larry Merchant, for example, many people have criticized him for being a racist, you know, allegedly when it comes down to the overall and for him not being an objective commentator, you know, if you want those guys to be objective and logical, you have to be objective and logical. You have to try to take the high road on this one. You have to be as objective and logical as you can. That is going to lead to the best judgments. That is going to lead to the truth. That is going to lead to the best things possible. Like Canelo Alvarez. Because he's Latino. Because if Canelo Alvarez was black, those uh, 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 um, African-American channels would love Canelo Alvarez. I agree. And if Vasily Lomachenko was black, they would say overall that he's one of the greatest fighters of all time. I agree. <laughs> but it is what it is. Teofimo Lopez, y'all would love Teofimo Lopez. Just like those respective channels was going to... I agree. And if Teofimo Lopez was a black fighter, they wouldn't even mention Devin Haney. Because what are they saying about Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford, even though to me, it seems like Terrence Crawford is not serious about taking these big fights. They're not saying that they're ducking each other right now. And you know why that is? Because they can't allege that one of the other is ducking each other right now because they need to have either Earl Spence or Terrence Crawford at the number one pound for pound spot. Because you know who is threatening? <laughs> you know who is threatening the number one pound for pound spot right now? Canelo Alvarez. And he's not a black fighter. So it is what it is. And if they make it seem like Terrence Crawford or Earl Spence, if one of them is avoiding each other, then when it comes down to it, that would mean that they maybe cannot have that fighter at the number one pound for pound spot. Because according to them, the reason why Canelo is not at the number one pound for pound spot, according to them, is because he's avoiding smoke and all this sort of stuff. But anyway. Lopez to beat um, Vasil Lomachenko, but in reality, y'all hated him because he said he uttered the word biatch. When emphasizing what what the what, what Tia from Lopez feel Deontay Wilder is acting because of the the allegation and the excuses. So those perspective channels that are Deontay Wilder, Deontay Wilder is the poster boy of those channels. Now they hate the now they hate Tia from Lopez for those comments, and now they want to shame him with the likes of Devin Haney because Devin Haney is a brother himself. Shout out to Devin Haney. Shout out to Tia from Lopez. Let's be a real. Let's be honest. At the end of the day, man, this is a boxer. Why would we want to shame the guy that's actually accompli accomplishing greatness? Because their greatness is not your greatness. You're not proud of their greatness because it's not your ethnicity, race, or culture. When you see a white man beat a black guy in the ring like Tyson Fury, I know, the, I, know I feel the pain. I know, I know, I know the struggle. I know. That don't look good. You hate it. Damn, another. Damn, my brother lost. Uh, even with Nate Robinson, what you saw in the comment box. How you going to let a white boy beat you up like that? Because it's about the white beating the black. <laughs> Wait, did you say that Nate Robinson said that to Deontay Wilder? I, I really hope overall that they were saying that to Nate Robinson. Because if Nate Robinson said that to Deontay Wilder, <laughs> he has no room to talk about. A white boy beating anybody right now the way that he got the, the brakes beat off of him by what, what was that one dude's name? Jake Paul? <laughs> he beat that dude's ass. And I understand the ingrained, the struggle, the hate that is ingrained in, in, in people's hearts. You know what it is. And once again, boxing is an individual sport. When it comes to a team sport, it's much more different because it falls on the team and the fault of others. And there's going to be different races, different ethnicities. But an individual sport is 
<laughs> who's smarter, who's stronger, who's a greater athlete. And when it comes to the individual demographics and races, they're going to look at that as maybe, you know, and, you know, I hate to say this, but they're going to look at that, you know, sometimes as who has the more dominant fighters as, as a superior race. That's what a lot of them look at it as. That's just the way it goes. And it could be the same way with the whites hating the blacks and the blacks hating the whites are the same shit. We know. We know the struggle. At the end of the day, everybody will been oppressed. Everybody has an oppressor, an oppressor in every corner of this world. <laughs> but we're talking about boxing. And boxing is one of the most racist communities of all sports. Boxing is the most racial sport there is. There is no more racial sport <laughs> than the sport of boxing. So it is what it is. <clears throat> but I love it. Because I love the sport of boxing because it brings all supposed to bring all coaches together. But it does. That's not gonna happen <laughs> when it comes down to the overall. But it is what it is. It's not like that speech like Rocky did in Rocky IV with Drago. If everybody come together, everybody can come together. Listen, when it comes down to once again, all the culture cultures coming together, that's a little bit unrealistic. And I'm not saying overall that I'm trying to split anybody up. But the Caucasians at the end of the day, they're going to they're gonna cheer for the Caucasians. <laughs> the Latinos at the end of the day, they're going to cheer for the Latinos. You know, the African Americans or the blacks, whatever they want to label themselves as, they're going to cheer for the African Americans or the black fighters. There's no problem with that. You know, Asians going to cheer for the Asians and Arabs are going to cheer for the Arabs. That's not the problem. The problem is, is that you always have to try to be as objective and logical as possible. There's no problem with supporting your own. <laughs> but as soon as you turn illogical and not objective... That's when you become a pro-racial fanboy. And that's something you should never strive to be. Ain't no love here, man. Anyway, I'm going live tomorrow. We could talk, we could time about, we could talk about it. Hey, if you don't like what I'm saying, then hey, I'm going live tomorrow, probably 10 30, 10 30 a.m. Eastern time. Let's chop it up. Let's talk about it. Y'all already know, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Get my updated video. I could save more, but damn, I could save it for the live. Got it, go. And that's pretty much it for this video. I just thought that I would review that video. It's interesting to get a Latino channel's perspective because I do believe that he is Latino. But it is what it is. This is my first time ever seeing this video, but I thought that I would comment on this because there's a lot of important things to say. But once again, the LDBC and new media's motivations they are pro black make no mistake but it is what it is anyways guys that's really about it for today and once again this is not a pro racial channel anyone is welcome to the channel when it comes down to the overall all right it is what it is you know all, all i'm trying to do is expose certain people's motivations and give my logical and objective analysis the way that i perceive it to be so it is what it is that's about it for today thanks so much for watching i'll talk to y'all later